Good evening, you are watching again, uh, Woman of Power, TV Omaha, and I am Prophetess Redeem, and um, we are here this evening. We want to talk to you about the joy of our salvation. Um, first of all, uh, Woman of Power has a foundation, and the foundation is Cornerstone. We also have a 24-hour prayer line where you can call to join with, with, with you, to pray with you about any and everything going on. But we want to talk to you about the joy of your salvation or of my salvation. And today we are also still continuing on St. John's chapter 3 and 16, where God so loved the world, he gave us his only son. And if you think about the son that God gave us, then you would know what joy it is. We ladies know what joy it is when you have a child, how wonderful that feels. And because I know how wonderful that feels, then that's why I'm telling you that God had to love us in order to give his only son unto us. And that joy of having that son and to giving it back is even more joy because God desired to have you to come on to his kingdom. So when we talk about the joy of our salvation, we also can entwine it into, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And uh, we have seen an assurance of that joy is how we know that we are saved. Knowing that you are saved is one of the best thing that the world can ever offer. But a lot of times when we talk about being saved, we don't understand being saved and going to church is two different things. And see, I don't want to hoop and shout, because I can hoop just like any other preacher, but I don't want to hoop. I want to talk to you woman to woman, child of God to child of God, sister to sister and sister to brother this evening. Just want to tell you that God loves you, and I will always remind you how much God loves you. But I'm talking to you about your salvation and being saved. And we most times forget about how we get saved. Be gets, getting saved is not knowing that every week we're going to dress up, go into church, never miss a sermon, never miss a service, every Wednesday, every Friday, or however you go to church. That is not getting saved. Getting saved is when you change your partner. And yes, I said change your partner because when you go to parties and you shout and you do this and you can dance and you can sing or you can rap, yes, that is a partner. But that's a different kind of partner when you love the Lord Jesus Christ. All you have to do is change partners and rap for Jesus and shout for Jesus and go to church instead of parties. But the beauty about it now is getting saved. Getting saved is right in the middle, your joy. You know this song say, this joy that I have, the world did not give it to me. And I dare the world to take my joy away from me. So that is the kind of joy I'm talking about. Right in the middle of changing the dancers or changing whoever you play games with, you will have save in there. And saving is when you get that joy of your salvation that I'm talking about. See, there is something named circumcise. Many of us that have kids know about circumcision. Is when we take the boy baby into the hospital and we go ahead and get the doctor to perform something, you know, cut the foreskin back and all of that nine yards. So what are we talking about? When you have your heart, you're going to take your heart to the altar. You know your heart, I have a little accent, but I pray today that accent be bind in the name of Jesus and you will hear what God wants you to hear. And if you sit back, take your slippers off, take your shoes off, get comfortable with a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, or a cup of glass of water, and just sit back and relax with me this evening, talk to me. Tell me what your understanding will be. And if you talk to me, you can call me 
at uh, 402-210-2523. That's the prior line. And tell me what you have learned from me on this radio show. So again, if you're just tuning in, this is the Woman of Power TV Omaha. And I am Prophetess Redeem or Bishop Redeem right here talking to you. And today the scripture is St. John's 316. And we are entwining it with the joy of your salvation. So as, as we are talking about the joy of the salvation, we are talking about being in the middle and wanting to be circumcised. You take your heart to the cross. And the cross is the altar in the church. And when you go and you kneel to the cross, you ask Jesus Christ to circumcise your heart. And you know, some people talk about you don't hear from God today like back then. But how could you say that? Isn't God the same today, yesterday, and forever? If you believe his word, that's what his word said. His word said, I change it never. I am the Lord, your God. I am the Lord, redeems God, and I change never. So what he did for Moses, what he did for David, what he did for Elijah, what he did for Ruth, what he did for Naomi, what he did for Esther. Remember Esther said, entreat me not to leave thee. Uh, no, Ruth, I'm sorry, not to return from following after thee. Because my God is your God. Remember Esther say, if I perish, I perish. I must see the king. All of those good disciples and, and, and God never change. It's the same God. But what I want you in Omaha to do today is to know that the Bible, the words in the Bible, all those sayings are those prophets' words. What is your testimony today? Create a testimony for yourself. I always says put some prior in the prior bank and keep a bank card. You know how you have the bank card, you put it in the machine, you get some money out. Yes, you can put the prior card in the prior bank and you can get some prior out in hard times. So we are talking about the joy and you can have joy in hard times. You don't have joy only when time is good and happiness. You got a good job. You're making some money, a nice car. Okay, I got joy. That joy is not nice. The real joy is when you get it in suffering. You know, the Bible tells you about long suffering. And the joy comes right in the middle of long suffering. That's when you get the perfect joy today. And like I'm telling you, when you go to the altar and you ask Jesus to circumcise that heart of yours, that's the best joy. It will be the best joy that anyone could ever have. And it will be the joy of success. And if you have that joy, he says, how can we never lose a salvation? But it is sufficient. That joy is a very good sufficient for everything. And if you having the little joy of enjoyment to that salvation, then you know all is well. Our friends, million of people, yes, million of people that I'm saying would have the security knowing, would love to have the security, knowing that they have the joy of having Jesus Christ as their Savior. And when I'm telling you that, there is no joke about it. And I can double dare you to tell you, that I'm telling you the truth today. The truth of having Jesus Christ as your savior is the best joy that anyone could have. That's why my way of giving out tracts on the street and preaching on the street, that is my joy. I care not if no one wants to go with me because that is my joy. Yes, I would love to share that joy with anyone who wants to go out on the street but if they says no, that is my joy. So therefore, I have to go alone because this road that I'm walking is not a road for me and my kids. It's not a road for me and my husband. It's not a road for me and my friend. I would love for them to walk with me. My husband, my friend, my kids, anyone I would love to walk with me along this road. But I'm saying just if they don't want to walk with me, there is no big deal about that because I love this joy that I have. 
this way of praising God, it's a good way. And when I learn that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me, I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about me. And on TV land, I'm talking about you. Yes, Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And if you want, you can give up everything. There is one thing requires. And the one thing that requires is for you to say yes to this man, Jesus. If you say yes to this man, Jesus, I guarantee you that he'll say yes to you. But there is something. He does not push himself and no one. Jesus do not push himself and no one. He asks you to give up all that is wrong that you're doing. But he's not asking you to do that in one time. You do that in a timely fashion and a timely manner. And if you do it on this timely manner and this timely fashion, it will work itself out. It will work itself right in. It will work itself right over. There is something that says it's too high to get over it, and it's too low to get under it. It builds so much round that you cannot get around it. But if you accept Jesus Christ, he will work itself out for you. And today, that's the reason why, my friend, I will continue to go on the street. See, most times when I go into the churches, most times the churches are emptied. And it's always a reason why a church empty. If you stay long enough, you will find out why the church is empty. Because Jesus Christ died for all of us. In St. John 17, he says, I come not for the entire world, but only for those that my father entrusted in me. Don't you want to be entrusted that Jesus Christ entrusted his son for you today? It would be a joy if you allow Jesus Christ to be entrusted in his father for you today. So we are talking about the joy of your salvation. And we are still talking about St. John's 3.16. See, I love that verse because he said he'd give his life for me. Jesus Christ could have said no. He did not have to do it today, saints. He did not have to do it today, friends. He did not have to do it today if you're going to call yourself a sinner. He would not have to do it today, whatever or whoever you are. But if you just give him that opportunity, just one opportunity you give God, one opportunity you give Jesus. See, the world doesn't beat upon us. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. Yes, the world do not beat upon us. Guess what? We beat upon ourselves. We fight ourselves. And the world just sit back and watch us beating upon ourselves. We do a good job about it. Because what happened is, we want to be respected as a Christian, but we do not want to respect somebody else as a Christian. We want an opportunity to do stuff, but we don't want to give somebody else an opportunity to do this. We think that Jesus died for us or that Jesus saves us. But we don't want to believe or give another person the opportunity that Jesus loves them or died for them too. See, we make too much decision on our own. And we don't give God or Jesus Christ the opportunity to make the decision for us. It's easy for us to say that God told us so. But why don't you believe that God tell the other person so too? Where were you when God was telling the other person? As well as where was the other person when God was telling you? So the same thing that you believe. You know, I've talked to somebody and they told me, Oh, God makes me to be a judger. God makes me to cut down this and God makes me to cut down that. Well, why don't you believe that God make the other person a judger to judge you? Why don't you believe that God made the other person a cutter to cut you down? See, you believe in stuff for yourself, but you don't want somebody else to believe in stuff for themselves. Well, my friend, that's not how joy works. My friend, that's not how love works. And a perfect example is to say about love is about how God gave his son for us.